and welcome into episode two of Shark Bites. I'm John Clement alongside MJ Merkel. MJ, first off, welcome back here to Elmira. And uh, how's it been going this offseason? Obviously, you've played a large part in putting this team together and getting things going. Oh, thanks for having me, John. Um, it's been uh, quite chaotic since we got here, but, uh, you know, we're finally getting down to the last couple of weeks before our season, and uh, it's getting exciting. Um, you know, Tyler and me have worked real hard with putting a good team together, and we're, we're pretty confident that we're going to be successful this year. Obviously, uh, kind of a weird training camp. Uh, I've talked with Tyler about it last week. You guys not only have training camp, but you've got that exhibition game, something of a rarity in the FPHL. Uh, knowing that you're going to travel up to Watertown and get to see these guys in game action, does it put a little bit more stress on those first couple days of camp? I mean, it does, but at the same time, uh, it's something you don't normally see in this league. Um, you know, obviously, there's preseason games that don't take place for specific reasons. Uh, depending on who we're playing, but um, you know, it, it gives the guys an extra chance to show us what they have before we have to get down to our final number. So, um, you know, I think it's it's more of a help for for me and Tyler in the long run. Speaking of that, obviously, getting down to the final number, you have two days after that training camp game to get ready for the home opener on October the 13th. That's coming right up and right around the corner. Uh, when you guys look at that and trying to figure out what your final roster is going to be, is there a comfort level coming into the camp? You already kind of know who you want to keep an eye on, or is it kind of all up in the air at this point? Uh, no, me and Tyler, have we've got a pretty good idea of, of what our final roster is going to look like and, and what we're going to bring into that final weekend. Um, you know, we, we just want to get to that for that opening weekend, you know, specifically because we do play Binghamton. Um, you know, it's going to be a good it's going to be a good opening weekend for us. Speaking of that, uh, obviously Binghamton's a team you guys are going to see quite a bit. They're just 57 minutes down the road. Uh, it's going to be an intense rivalry over the course of the season. Fans are going to come here from Binghamton. People from here are going to go to Binghamton. Uh, it, it's just one of those things that's going to be a natural rivalry. But playing them that many times, how much does that add to a, to an event where really some of these players don't know the history, don't know the past between these two teams? Um, I mean, obviously, we have the kind of, I mean, you could say a bit of bad blood between the coaching staff there. Um, you know, Tyler being, uh, you know, one of the star players there last year. Uh, I had a short short scent there as well, you know, but being my hometown. Um, you know, we want those wins. Um, no matter our, what the parameters are, um, we're going to get whatever we need to do done um, to get those wins. And, I mean, those are important games for us, considering that will be one of the top teams in our division. You talk about the division, and this will be a first for uh, people in Elmira. Obviously, they saw it a little bit last year with the Mammoth. But the divisional play, it's really kind of a newer uh, association for the FPHL. It was used to be you played everybody. Uh, you saw Carolina. You saw Columbus. You saw those teams. Uh, not going to see Baton Rouge. Not going to see Mississippi. Uh, going to see Withville one time. Uh, does that make it easier or harder to plan out as far as the coaching staff for the schedule for the upcoming year? I don't think it makes it any any more difficult than it already is. Um, you know, if anything, it builds a bit of suspense for those games, knowing that we don't get to play them as often. But at the same time, you know, we get to play Binghamton, the uh, the Danburys, the Watertowns as many times as we do. It, it creates uh, it creates quite a good rivalry for our for our local team. So. You know, we're, we're thrilled about it. We're, we're very excited, and, and we want to get things going. We bring up Danbury. That's obviously the reigning defending champions that are going to be here quite a bit. You're going to be out in Danbury quite a bit. It's a raucous crowd out there. Uh, what do you guys need from the home supporters who are watching this right now, taking a chance to, uh, to get to know you guys? But what do you need from them as we come in and reopen First Arena and get things going when you play a team like Danbury who's used to a loud, raucous atmosphere? Um, in this league, uh, obviously, just showing up in numbers is uh, very important. Um, you know, support from the community is like what we've been stressing since we started here uh, back in June. So, um, you know, obviously, we'll do anything we can to get as many people in the stands as, um, as possible for those games, especially with them being the defending champions. Um, Billy runs a great team there, and uh, we're looking forward to playing them as many times as we are. Well, speaking of playing teams a lot, obviously, uh, one of the things that you guys do and are trying to do this season is get back out in the community a little bit more. Uh, it's something that uh, fans have talked about wanting. You guys were at Wisner Park just for the last couple weeks of summer. Uh, I know there's some plans to get out in the community and do some more things. How important is it to acclimate these players and make them feel like Elmira is a, a home away from home, if you will? Uh, we just want to bring a, a different environment for these guys this year. Um, we, we feel as if we bring, um, you know, kind of a tight-knit community to, to them, and, you know, we give them a bit of perks within town, um, a couple of deals at some restaurants, stuff like that. It, it'll go a long way. You know, the, these teams thrive off of community involvement, so um, the more people we have involved, uh, the better off it's going to be. 
Before I let you go, obviously assistant coach for the team now, uh, also did your, your turn playing in the league. Uh, what do you say to guys who are coming in for their first ever camp, their first ever time playing FPHL hockey? Uh, obviously Tyler, one of the league leaders all time of uh, goal scoring and doing some things on his end, um, but you also have played in this league and, and know what it takes to compete and fight for a championship as you guys have done. Uh, what do you need to tell guys who are coming and making their first appearance here in the FPHL? Um, embrace your time. Uh, take guys that have uh, a lot of games under their belt, like our coach Tyler. Um, you know, he's got over 300, 300 goals for this league. Um, you know, don't don't hesitate to take notes from guys like that. Um, you know, he knows a lot about the game and a lot about this league in particular. He's played in other leagues. Um, you know, just don't hesitate. Take notes. Do whatever you can to get better every day, and you know, come come to the rink with a good attitude. There you go. Well, last thing before I let everybody go. We've got a beautiful brand new selection of merchandise. You can see it right here. MJ Merkel wearing that beautiful new hoodie. Come down to the pro shop. Get yours right here at the first arena. See the hours at the end of this video. That's it this week. It's time. Once again, we'll see you next week for Shark Bites.